Komodo Internet Security Premium Version 10 Final This is Leo and you are watching the PC Security Channel. So we have a major release from Komodo and this time they have revamped the user interface yet again. Everything looks clean and organized, so I have no complaints. They have maintained the customizability of the home screen while still giving you the advanced view. I really like the addition of managed protection, which allows you to turn on and off individual components very quickly, including things like fire scope, hips, and website filtering. So this is a very handy addition. Apart from that, on the back end, we have a few changes to the automatic sandbox. Also, there is the addition of secure shopping, which is kind of like a successor to virtual desktop. And this is a very powerful sandbox. It allows you to not only visit any website, but also run any application which you want to use to perform kind of a secure transaction. So if you have highly sensitive data, you might want to go ahead and run it on this virtual desktop. Now, the great thing about this is it has a lot of features built in. For example, it is not possible to take screenshots while you're in this mode. All processes are also isolated. So even in the occasion that you're infected with something like a rat or remote access tool, this mode can still save you from a lot of cyber attacks and keep your data safe. Now going into advanced settings, most of the things here are quite similar to the previous version, so not many surprises. Firescope is enabled by default, and uh, some of the features like Sandbox now have uh, a better settings overview, but apart from that, it is pretty much the same internally. I haven't changed any settings apart from the default auto quarantine option. So it's going to show us alerts. I wanted that just so that we know what it's blocking. It is fully up to date, as you can see. Now we're going to get started with the test. I noticed the number of processes has increased in this version, but it's still very light nonetheless. So no complaints there. We have a few malware links here. Let's just try them out and see how Komodo stands up to it. A lot of Komodo's features work on execution and uh, I'm assuming the sandbox will be used a lot. Komodo aren't exactly known for the most cutting edge signatures, and that's not the direction they're intending to head into, but that doesn't matter. We don't care how things are blocked as long as they are. This one needs to be renamed to EXE before it can do its magic. By the way, if any of you are wondering where the links are coming from, it's actually on my desktop. The document is not on the virtual machine, so you're not able to see it, but, well, it's there on another monitor. We'll keep going through the links. Some of these are not working out as they have been sandboxed. This one seems to be stuck, so I'm just going to cancel it if I can. Let's see if we can access this website now. Hmm, it seems like Internet Explorer has just stopped responding. Oh, this is why. So, we have a thread that's detected. That Geek Buddy pop-up, although annoying, is one time, so it's not really a concern. Let's continue where we left off. I'm just gonna try this link again. Once again, it's caught by Komodo. Oh, it wants me to restart. I'm not going to do that until the link test is over. Oh, okay. I forgot to check this. Do not ask me this question again. So we're down to the last two links. 
casecrypted.exe. And the last one has a really cool name, clean.exe. Nothing suspicious about this. And that concludes the link test. I don't think our system was infected, but uh, I'm going to take a look at the process nonetheless. I don't see anything suspicious that's running over here. Maybe it is disguised, or maybe I just can't see. Um, either way, we're just going to proceed with the file test and we'll see how things go because I, I don't have anything stopping me or interfering with my usage. So it's fair enough to proceed with the test and we'll just see at the end what was missed. But I suspect um, nothing really got through. So now comes the interesting part or the file test, which will be a lot more intriguing. I have uh, thrown a lot of files onto a flash drive since Komodo does distinguish between different sources of files. So I'm just going to plug in the infected flash drive and let's see what happens when we try to drag those files into our system. I've just plugged it in and it's already showing up. It's not infected in the traditional sense. There's no auto run malware, but we have all our malware samples here. There are 1,085 of them in total, and Komodo's already cleaning them up. By the way, these are the same samples I used in the Bitdefender test, so they're about a week old. Now I'm going to uh, do a right-click scan, and let's see what Komodo can remove. Before that, I'll just turn off the AV to make things a little bit quicker and then we'll drag in the rest to our computer with the AV turned on. That's how we're going to do it. The scan interface also has some new colors. It was reasonably fast um, for a flash drive. I'm sure if I had copied the files onto the host system SSD, it would have been a lot faster. But now we're going to uh, clean all of these files. I believe clean is still quarantine, although I think it might repair a few files, but it's not giving me any other options. So, well, I'm just going to clean. All our threats are now cleaned, but we need to restart the computer, so I'm going to comply and do that. The computer just rebooted, so now we're going to drag the rest of the remaining files onto our desktop. As you can see, it's still detecting some stuff. I'm just going to hit clean on every instance. I think it's probably because of the cloud component. All the malware files are now on the system, at least those that were missed and I calculated the detection ratio using this number and it turns out to be exactly 80.092%. 80.1%, whatever. That would normally be okay, but considering the age of these files, I would call that pretty low. However, that's not Komodo's strength, really. So now comes the interesting part. I'm going to start running these files with all the uh, prevention capabilities turned on. The ones turned on by default, that is. I still won't be enabling HIPS, but uh, we have the sandbox, and it'll be interesting to see if anything makes its way through. They have some improvements in the back end of the sandbox, so now it can recognize hidden command line instructions and prevent such apps from making changes to your system. So the first one's a JS file. We're not getting any alerts since uh, the sandbox process is entirely automated. The green butter indicates a sandboxed application. We're going to get tons of process and memory for this test, I'm sure. All right, we have our first alert. I'm going to go with the default setting. We do have malicious process in memory. Their activities, however, are probably being limited. There's one that seems to be running. Hmm. 
adware crap. Adobe Photoshop 2020. No, 2020, 14, 20. Wow. I'll take that. We did have a signature alert there, by the way. It's going to be really hard to get a lot of these files to run since Komodo is going to take up resources. The applications are going to keep running in the sandbox. Hmm, the PC has already slowed to a crawl. The folder itself has stopped responding. And uh, that's not necessarily because the system is infected. We probably just have too many applications running. Some of these are now being caught once they've extracted their payloads. We're going to run a few more. We have a lot of files, so it's impossible to go through each and every one of them. We are getting a lot of signature detections. DLL and TMP files, once they're extracted, they're being blocked. A few more files and uh, that should conclude the last part of this test. From the looks of it, we don't really have too much happening at this point. Most of the programs seem to be failing inside the sandbox. Lots of hardware setups in here. Wow, endless error messages. I'll call it a day now. So I'll leave the system to run for some time before restarting it, removing all the files, including the ones in our downloads folder. And then we'll do our second opinion scans and see if the system was infected. An initial scan by Hitman Pro detected a ton of stuff, but all of this, as you can notice, is located in hard disk volume two, which I believe is the sandbox folder. These aren't exactly infections since they're under VT root, so Komodo is virtualizing access to these files. In order to confirm that, I'm just going to reset the sandbox and see what happens then. But before that, I'd like to show you what Zamana found. And it found one potentially unwanted modification, which is a registry key. It seems like some kind of proxy was modified. Doesn't seem like a big deal. So let's just go ahead and reset the sandbox. I just disabled Komodo to make the scans faster at the moment. Once we erase changes, it should get rid of those files. So now I'm simply going to rescan with Hitman Pro and I'm also going to do a Malwarebytes scan and I'll be back with the results. Hitman Pro did not find anything. Malwarebytes found three files, but these are all in Komodo's quarantine, so they don't count. That brings us to the final thoughts. Komodo continues to be a very solid option for enthusiasts. It is a genuinely powerful product. Signature-less protection, it has its ups and downs. I would strongly recommend that you guys check out the Satana video in which I ran one of the deadliest ransomware out there on a system protected by Komodo. Komodo didn't have the signatures for it, but Satana just wouldn't run on that system, even with literally everything disabled. So that just shows that they have a lot going on when it comes to backend technology, but this is still not the ideal implementation of that. It still gives you the default mode and unlimited modes, so 
In the end, a lot depends on user choice. Let me know your thoughts on Komodo Internet Security Premium version 10. It's hard to match these features in a free internet security program. And when it comes to the firewall, it is pure gold for combinations. I don't think there's any other firewall program that gives you that level of customizability and uh, is that robust and versatile. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.